So welcome everybody to my entrance in the Rusty Gate Challenge. Um, I'm going to be trying my hand at um, turning this into an instrument, um, which is not something I've done before, um, but hopefully it's something that um, I can uh, I can do today. Um, I did this last night on my computer and I think I got some good results, um, but I'm going to rerun it now um, on camera with the recording going um, to see if I can reproduce the um, results that I had yesterday uh, and also just to document the process a little bit um, hopefully it's interesting and hopefully it uh, sounds good and is useful to somebody um, I've got my iMac in front of me where I'm running Logic um, and then I've got my uh, MacBook next to it um, it's an older model but uh, it's recording my voice and the output from Logic here I've got my MIDI keyboard down here, which um, is off, off camera, just down below. Um, it seems to do the trick. It's a little Axiom 25. Um, I'm not a very good keyboard player. It will do what I need it to do. Um, and so let's get started. Uh, so I really like the rusty gate sound uh, much more than the um, train station sound or whatever it was. Um, and I really liked here, if we zoom in a bit on um, on this clip, this bit in the middle, there, that first initial high pitch, and then it gets lower. That bit there, um, that's what interests me the most. Um, there's a few different variations of it, um, and any of them would work. Um, but I, I really liked that first one. Was it the first one or the second one? Uh, this second one here. Um, so my technique for that was to um, split this bit up here, um, delete its surroundings, and we get a nice short sharp note, uh, which I think is probably interesting enough. Um, the next thing I set out to do was to actually put it in tune, because I didn't know if this would be in tune. Of course it's not, because it's a gate. Um, so my first um, my first step was to go um, to the effects here um, in metering and just put a tuner on. Um, and it, it, it shows me it's an A-sharp. So I'm going to assume from here on that it's almost quite an A-sharp. Not exactly, but almost. Um, and then, the next step, I'm actually just going to put auto-tune on it. I can switch that on. All the notes off, um, except for A-sharp. Um, I can set it to super quick. Um, and and, um, and in exchanging those in position, um, it will hit um, that A sharp a bit, a bit closer. Um, so I'm going to leave that there and leave that. <laughs> um, the other option would be to go near enough I think so we'll close that first off zoomed right in so we can really see this waveform um, because I think that will help us um, over the next little while to get a good sound so we do have this bit at the beginning where it's lower in, in amplitude um, so we just want to trim that to about there and then we want to bring this back to just get that top top note. Then we're going to loop it. We're going to repeat that. And so there is that sort of machine gunning kind of sound to it. Um, that's to do with where we've looped it. So we can see on here that there's this drop. Um, so that the the loop ends quite high, and the loop begins a lower pitch, uh, lower. Um, level. So if we do this until we get it closer and then if we bring this back a bit we can see the initial uh, 
repeat of the loop gets a little bit higher. Uh, and then we get a slightly um, less intense attack. Now I actually don't mind that little bit of attack there, um, so we're going to leave that there and I'm going to loop this and I'm going to set this uh, playback loop region as well so that we're only hearing that every time we play, every time we play back. Um, it's a pretty, pretty awful sound actually, um, but I think that will help us uh, later on. So then in order to get rid of some of that sort of machine gun kind of sound to it, I'm going to put a bit of compression on. Uh, and I'm going to set that quite hard. I'm just going to turn this down because it is a bit loud. Um, and I'm going to put on um, like a keyboard kind of thing. I'm just going to pick one. Um, some of the volume differences in there. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to export that as audio file. I'm putting all of this in a, in a folder that I've created just for this here. And I'm going to call it A Sharp Raw, because it's just the, just the sound. Then what we can do is we can go over here and start building our um, excess patch. We're not actually going to use this um, original sound. It's a bit too harsh, I think. Um, but we will be able to um, use it just to set up and get things kind of working. So uh, I'll go back to that file I've just created. I'll drag it in. It's quite nice to set that to A sharp. Um, I worked out that A sharp 5 was about right. Um, need to trim this a little bit here um, so that we can get that um, play that as an instrument, which I think is uh, not bad. It's got a sort of rhythm to it, um, which I'm particularly interested in as a drummer. Um, so the rhythm is probably a little bit much, actually. Um, so I'll close that. Um, but I'm really going to have to get back into this and find a... Um, a smoother sound. By setting this uh, to A sharp 5, let's try A sharp 6 just to see what range it is a bit lower down. This is still quite a step in there um, that we will need to iron out. So what we want here is this sound to loop onto a sound that's even in, in volume here. So there'll be a little bit of adjustments in this, um, but hopefully we can get that to sort of line up a little bit. And it doesn't matter that there's a little bit of a wave to it. Um, I think that's quite nice actually. There's not, there's not too aggressive. Um, and so here that's too much, so if we pull this back, we have to come back off the beginning a bit, so as to make sure this point and this point are kind of even with each other. So if we go to there, and we can see that on these other um, waveforms up here, that there's not as much of a dip. The um, the sort of buzzing isn't as um, isn't as intense. Um, so we're going to bring this back a little bit again.
Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, just going to pull this down a bit. Um, so that we can look at this in a sort of cleaner way. Uh, might pull this out. This is all just playing um, to try and find, you know, something that isn't too intense. So we're getting a, a wave there, but there's not that click anymore. Um, so that's actually a really nice result um, for that. Um, so again, I'll put that at zero. I'll zoom out and I'll um, switch that off and I'll zoom out some more and we'll re-save this um, as our raw file. Um, so we'll export this out, export as audio, um, a sharp raw. We want to leave all these off for now, but we'll come back to those, replace that one, and then I'm going to go to my EXS instrument. I'm going to delete this um, because I don't want that one anymore. Uh, and then I'm going to go back and re-re-import it. I'm going to set that to a sharp 5 when I learn how to type properly. Um, and then here it's almost like a string instrument, it's almost bowed, it's got like a, a kind of bowed sort of sound to it, which I think um, works quite well actually. I think is the kind of thing that potentially could be used um, as like a string instrument. You're still getting a little bit of a click there, I think, um, but I think it's a definitely a softer sound. Now, um, especially when we drop down the octaves, um, it has that really like, it's like a pad but it's got a bit of grit to it. Uh, and if we drop down again, um, I think that's quite nice, it's quite textural. Um, which I think is really good. So it, it, that's our baseline, uh, and I'm really happy with how that works even though that is awful. Um, so. <laughs> Um, so the pitch drop that we're experiencing there, because it's set to A5, I think is really, um, really affects us later on. It gives us that nice um, grittiness because there's all that um, intense kind of going on. Um, that's how I can describe it. I'm a drummer after all. That's how I do things. Um, so from then, uh, we're going to go back to this sound that we've already got. I'm going to minimise this. We're going to go back to this sound. Um, and even though it is awful, and I'm going to keep pulling this down, even though it's awful, when we slow that down, we get a really nice sound. So what I'm going to do now is instead of going out to a, uh, you know, a fun box, uh, I'm going to go to the amp and pedal board designer, uh, and I'm going to put this on. Um, because it gives you much the same options as an external hardware box doing this. Um, I don't have any guitar effects anymore. I got rid of all my guitar stuff uh, because I don't play it very often. Uh, and I'm also going to put an amp simulator, so a guitar amp designer. And then, at the end, I'm going to put a space designer and kind of add a little bit of room sound, even though, um, even though we don't necessarily uh, always want uh, a room sound as such. There's some really nice um, reverbs in here in the space designer where we can um, you know hopefully just make our sound that little less kind of... Uh, so I'm going to switch these off for now and I'll come back to them. Um, because that's just hideous. Um, but what we can do um, is we can um, use something like um, some of these very guitar style effects uh, fuzz, let's chuck in this one, I don't know what it is um, things like the spin box, the tremolo they can all um, adjust the sound in just the ways we're trying to um, to really kind of soften it a bit and to bring out some of that grit um, without making it too um, you know, we're not building a distortion machine um, and so, 
Um, these will be in stereo as well, only I'm only recording mono to the laptop because of technical stuff. Um, so there's monster fuzz I really liked. It's got controls called Roar and Growl, um, and I think it kind of gives a good sort of... Um, I really like the sound here, where it's, it's almost totally broken. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to how that sounds when it's been pitched down, um, because I think that'll be a really nice kind of sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export that again, and I'm going to call it uh, A Sharp Monster Fuzz. Um, Because we do want to keep that sound because we do want to keep that sound and we want to use um, that fuzziness that it has um, for um, perhaps a second layer so I'm going to just reduce like the easiest way to do this is you just reduce the volume right down we'll set this to A sharp 5 again and let's see where we end up we'll go back to one octave because we're not at the correct settings. So it still has that different rhythm, but there's that kind of different kind of graininess to it, which I really like. Um, and I think that's really nice when you start playing chords. So for something like this, I just want to play with the different... Yeah, it gives it that extra bit of distortion. You can hear that j -j 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 kind of distortions come up. Um, I've also got this... So we want to play with something like this where um, we can leave this off and just slowly bring up the distortion. Um, and something like this uh, spin box where we can um, it gives us a bit more of a wave and the wave is then independent of the sample loop wave that we've already got. Um, so I think these are really, really flexible. Um, And then when you put some distortion on that and you bring the drive up, you get that bit more distortion. And then if you reorder that, you get a very different sound again. Um, so that's something that we can look at um, soon. Um, the other one that we might want to look at is something like the... Where's it gone? Some of the phaser kind of, um, here's a Mooga Fuga cl clone looking thing, um, which gives a um, chorus kind of effect, gives a bit of swirliness, so we might come back to that. And then this phase thing, um, this was really, really good for. Um, stereo imaging and given it that sort of swirliness, especially once you do something like that, it gets, it gets pretty crazy. Um, it's a bit over the top, I think, but um, could be useful um, to give it that kind of um, swirliness and again, a, uh, a, f a flanger um, you know, has that kind of um, thing to it, um, and then to go into something like a tube, tube screamer, um, gives it even more. So if we switch all of these on, 
and we can let the rate be really fast because we're going to slow it down in the sampler anyway, right? So we can do that, um, which I think is quite nice. So let's go and export that. Um, and we want all the plugins on, so we don't want to switch them off. Um, so we're going to go A sharp um, phases. Uh, and we'll spit that out and we'll go back to here, we'll open our EXS and we'll put our phaser in and again we'll pull down the volume of this one because we don't want it from earlier um, and we we'll, yep, set that to the same pitch and now we get quite an interesting, I think um, kind of swirl swirly gritty kind of sound has a bit more kind of character to it because there's always something in it that's got a bit of a rhythm to it. Is that, um, velocity sensitive within the one. Um, sample. So I like that. Um, we could bring that up again and actually run both. And what's particularly nice actually is to put this down, uh, up one more, um, so you get the octave above with that fuzziness on it. and you get that sort of fuzziness um, in, in the high octave that maybe uh, is a bit so having that above I think is quite nice the pitch um, for the fuzz and then the low pitch being the sort of phase one that has a bit more kind of going on um, so from from here, if we switch everything on, this is just going to be silly, but let's put it all on anyway. Um, really sort of wacky. Um, I'm going to change the rate on this one so that when we combine it with the other one, the rate is different. Uh, and then I'm actually going to put on another... And I'm going to put this overdrive on. boost a little bit as well. So then we'll export that the same. We've got so these two effects are slightly different to each other. So because this one's got more effects on it, I'm inclined to turn that into a velocity layer. Um, and then we can put on um, how to um, play it as an instrument because we so we want that to be yeah call it a hundred um, and then this one up to a hundred so that as we're playing it 96 whatever so we've got the lower one here and then when we hit a high a harder note we get that extra bit of distortion I think going through a guitar amp is a very good way of creating a new sound. Um, so we're going to bring that up again. Um, again, play our favourite sound again. This is getting really, really draining on my ears. Um, so I really like this control here because there we've got that extra um, attack, and then here it's a bit softer. So we'll move it to a bit softer, we'll give it a bit more gain, and then some of these. It 
settings that give us just a bit more um, so the reverb really sucks out a lot of that um, noise and then the same thing here with the space designer we can put on um, something that really covers a lot of that um, rhythm. Again, we want um, if we want the effects on, but we want to include the audio tail because at the end we get that drop off um, uh, because of the reverb tail. <laughs> So because of that reverb, you, you really lose a lot of that um, rhythm. There's still a little bit of it there. But it's just a really nice pattern. Here. So I think we'll start with that as our bass sound. And we'll actually use that all over. Um, and then from that 97 up, I think we'll have that one with the rhythm. So we can have a nice soft sound. Slightly harder, slightly harder, slightly harder. Of course that's too loud um, on here, so if we bring that back to zero, it won't be quite as jumpy. I really like. Um, so that's going to be my pad. Um, I'm going to bring in a bit of this one um, with the, the phaser on it. So there's a little bit of character there. get rid of this monster fuzz one now because I haven't used it um, so I'll get rid of him um, so now the next so that's that's my pad with some dynamics to it what I want to add now is a note on and a note off uh, so for the note on I'm actually just going to go back to um, my original sound that I've got and I just want to go back to one and I actually want to make that even shorter as little as I can get so I'm going to zoom right in So it's it's literally like a gate, a piece of metal hitting another piece of metal on this gate somewhere. Um, so I quite I quite like that. Um, um, but I don't want um, any of these on there. So I just want. Although the amp was actually quite nice, I'm going to switch that back on. Um, turn the reverb off so I've just got that click so that click will be our um, start noise our um, hammer noise if you will um, I'm going to put that on and I'm going to set that to a one shot and it's over the whole range and I'm actually going to pull that up so I can hear it um, on here and then we'll go that's at 12 and it should just be at zero we'll just play 
play with that. So you get that initial kind of um, attack noise for each note. And because it's one shot, it doesn't matter how, how long you hold the key for, if you just touch it real quick, um, you get that. Um, so I'm just going to bring that down a little bit, just to give a little bit of an uh, intense um, kind of start. If this was a Labs product, for example, um, I would put on one of those sliders. Uh, I'd make a slider for the attack. Um, as well as for uh, the note start attack, I want to make a note, a key release sound. Um, because we've been doing that for the piano book project and that's I think been really good um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go the other way I've turned the reverb back on I'm going to take the dry sound out and that's it that's going to be our sound off um, so. do it that way. So uh, we've got a little bit of give at the end. Not a huge amount of reverb but a little bit uh, which I think is quite nice. And then just in here um, I found that bringing this up in um, in the EXS uh, 24 itself to give a little bit of note release um, I think really helps just that little bit. Um, maybe um, mostly because I don't have a sustain pedal a little bit of that um, and then I'm going to save my instrument and uh, export it to you guys um, I'm calling it Rusty Benham because Russell's my dad's name um, so that's going to be my submission for the uh, Rusty Gate Challenge uh, thanks for watching uh, this is my first setup in my uh, little uh, recording room here at home uh, and hopefully um, hopefully it's gone well uh, hopefully someone can use this and enjoy it um, good luck to everyone else entering um, and look forward to seeing everyone else's um, submissions thanks